This is a Nexus Special, episode 45, Google I.O. 2016, on May 19th, 2016. And now, objection! This Nexus Special is hosted by Ian R. Buck and Ryan Rampersett. Hello, Ian. Hi, Ryan. How's it going? Pretty well. That's good to hear. I've been having a good week. Really? I had very little work to do and a nice long keynote to watch. Wow. Mm -hmm. What keynote? WWDC? No. Hmm. Build? No, uh, it must be Apple Blackberry it, World. Uh, F8? Is that what Fate. Is, is, is that what Facebook calls theirs? Yes. Something like that. No, this is Google I.O. Google I.O. Google I.O. In May? 2016. Wow. Is it usually in June? No, it's usually in May. Okay, good. It just was in June that one time. Uh, okay. Right. Yeah, something about a calendar. Yeah. Gregorians. Yes, yeah. right, exactly. <laughs> so, yes, Google I.O. Had, or Google had their major event of the year, uh, which, you know, usually they, they take the opportunity to announce some major new products, um, probably talk about the next version of Android. Not usually new Nexus phones, though. That's in September. Hasn't been for years right. that has happened. Or October or whatever. Yep. Fall. So what what were we expecting going into this? What what did we know already and what, what did we expect to see? I don't know what we knew, but everybody was desperately clinging on to the last breath in Google's body, which would have been to fix Hangouts. That was the only thing anybody could have unanimously decided and put on their list of desires that were burning deeply in their bodies. Guess what? That didn't happen. Uh, oh, you're giving spoilers now. It's not a spoiler. I would say that we we also knew a lot about the next version of Android because Google decided to start their developer preview uh, early. much earlier. And they have like they had a, a kind of a proper opt-in system this time. Instead of having to flash a device yourself, you just log into their website with your Google account, mm-hmm. and it gives you a list of, of your devices that are eligible to use the preview. Yeah, and that, that actually is really helpful for not only them, but for everybody else. Mm-hmm. It's much easier to write all these stories and to talk about these new features when we actually have them. Yeah. Um, now, do you remember a couple of years ago when I went to a jury duty and I took with me my Nexus 5 I do remember and this. developer preview of M? That was a disaster. That I... thing was not designed to leave a table. I remember just before this happening, you were telling me, oh yeah, the, the, totally M, the M preview is totally stable. Denied. <laughs> so <I've>... Objection, <laughs> if you will. <laughs> sustained android s it's coming soon so uh I, I i've heard that the new developer preview of android n yeah is stable-ish are you talking about the version that you've been using for quite a while now no the, the one that just came out ah okay this week. the beta one yes yeah the beta one so i'm not gonna do it but i'm just saying that i could do it they, yeah they did make it sound well so in the keynote they said uh i think this is dave when he, dave was on the stage right i love dave yeah when uh, he said that uh we've got a beta program ready for your main phone so they seem confident enough in this that they they are kind of giving people permission to try this out on their daily driver yeah which is which is very nice of them to actually mark something as stable enough of course, when you go to the website and, and have to accept some terms, one of those terms is, yeah, this is this could be totally unstable, and it's totally your fault if, if your phone gets bricked. I so, mean, you know. I'm sure I agreed to those terms, and I wouldn't have cared if it happened, so yeah, it's okay. So let's actually go down the list of things in somewhat mostly order. Yeah, most of these things are coming straight from the keynote. Um, there's one or two way down at the bottom that uh, were announced like outside of the yeah, keynote. And after those, were, the fact. those were announced sort of at their respective um you know session events Mm -hmm. (laughs) and of course google io is still going on right now it's not over so uh there might be more stuff that happens later on that we'll have to append to the end of this episode but that's not likely i very much doubt it in fact uh today is being recorded on the thursday and this will probably be released on the friday so hello friday and um i think the sessions end at two tomorrow so there will be much less you know much less content to go through Yeah. yeah All right, so first up, uh, Sundar Pichai came on stage and uh, started us right off with Google Assistant. That was the first thing that they talked about. Honestly, Google Assistant is really like has 95% of the same functionality as the Google Now voice commands already have. Mm-hmm. Um, it just seems like it's going to be kind of packaged a little bit differently, uh, presented to the user a little bit differently. Uh, the major difference is that it's going to be more conversational than before. 
one of the big differences between Google Now and Siri up until now has been that Siri was kind of supposed to be like this person that you talk to. And so they built in a lot of things that didn't have to do with like doing tasks, but they, it'll also tell you jokes and, um, you know, you can sort of carry on a conversation about it or with it. Um, but Google Now was always just kind of like a very, like it, it, it was very clear that it was a machine that you were trying to perform a task with. Mm-hmm. Um, which I, I thought was pretty useful because it, what I've seen people using Siri mostly for always is to entertain themselves or their friends when we're all sitting around at, late at night and have nothing better to do. Whereas with Google Now, everything that I've seen people using it for is set a timer for whatever, whatever, you know, I, yep. actually remind me at some point to do something, you know, mm-hmm. play some music or whatever. I've never done anything but those utility commands on Google Now. I've used the timer. I've used reminders. Although, whenever you're around, I'll also try to play the OK Google game Stop in that. which it doesn't work. Um, Sundar Pichai was also playing that game on stage. He kept saying those two words and I was so happy that his voice is very different from mine because my phone did not respond. You know, I, I, um, it's always fun to play that game, but I wonder, you know, internally if they like have metrics about how successful it is to act, you know, to, to cause it to happen. Mm. Yeah. Cause I think that the, the samples of audio that it sends up to the server it only sends up there if it actually detects Google Map or right. you saying the hot words, right? Yeah. So it's not going to send it if you say the hot word and it doesn't detect it. Hopefully. Yeah. Uh, so thoughts on this? I mean, I, I'm i mostly... I think that this is like a baby step forward because we already had almost everything that it could do. Um, so I have two questions. One isn't a question, though. So it's called Google Assistant. Yeah. Are they just not calling it now anymore? I'm not, it seems like the now cards will still live somewhere, but they're kind of being separated in terms of their naming. Is the, the voice stuff is going to be separate from the now cards. So it'll just be called a Google Assistant. Probably. Oh, and also, I guess Google Assistant is going to be available from within other apps, such as yeah. what we're going to talk about in Hello. a little while. Hello. Okay. Well, that's cool. I guess I'm not that impressed. Um, I don't need to have what they call a natural conversation with something that's so insignificantly interesting. Mm-hmm. You know, if it was actually able to help me debug my Java code, that would be useful. <laughs> like if I ask spring boot time leaf examples and it actually l- gives me a tutorial, then I would be happy. Have you tried that? Okay, Google. No, it didn't work. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? Whoa, it worked. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so today we learned about Baltimore, apparently. Oh, that's amazing. All <laughs> well, right. you know, if we had this other product, this would be a lot easier. Yeah, that's true, because the next thing that they talked about was Google Home. Uh, now, this looked pretty familiar, being that uh, it's Amazon... It's a copy of the Amazon Echo. Yep, yep. Hmm. Very much a copy. Uh, so, the exception, I think, is that it's tied into a lot of Google's other... Uh, devices and services and everything and it's tied in fairly well Mm -hmm. yeah yeah um when they were talking about uh google home my one of the one of my concerns that i you know was thinking about and i was actually typing up a tweet about it uh right when they uh answered my question before i could voice it was can it can you control casting to other google cast devices you know Mm -hmm. um because i could imagine that okay yeah if i if i ask it to play some music, obviously it's going to default to playing it through the speaker that's built into the unit itself. Right. But what if I want it to play some music in my kitchen? Mm-hmm. Can it do that even when it's not in the kitchen? Yes, it can. That's good. Yeah. And so it, it knows that it should play on a Chromecast audio? Yeah, so presumably <laughs> if I have named the Chromecast audio something useful like kitchen speakers, mm-hmm. as I have, it will understand when I ask it to play something in the kitchen It'll do it on those. Well, that is almost entirely reasonable. Mm-hmm. Okay, what else can I do? Uh, well, it obviously uses a lot of the knowledge graph stuff to answer questions, um, which you know is very similar to what the Echo can do. It's also very similar to what my phone can do. That's true. When it yes. listens. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Hopefully, the uh, Google Home will be a bit more 
reliable on the listening yeah, department it, because that's its, it's entire plugged functionality. In, it has power. It's good to go. Yeah. And that, that setting isn't going to accidentally get turned off, you know, because that's the core it's of the It's been known to do thing. that on the phone. <laughs> I had this weird thing recently where my phone stopped giving me Google Now notifications. So I didn't know when, when I had a few events in my calendar that mm-hmm. weren't regular events, especially since I was taking care of my sisters and, you know, I had to drive them to things that I wasn't used to driving them to. Right. I would get the notification 15 minutes before and it's like, oh, well, it's going to take half an hour to get there. Crap. It would have been nice to know. Earlier. Earlier. Yeah. Hmm. Um, they also they also talk about it tying into other smart home systems, which I interpreted as like Nest. Yeah, they said Nest. And uh, I'm not sure what other like third party ones. They showed some lights being manipulated, so maybe Hue is in, on that list. But uh, I've heard that they aren't opening up an API just to everybody. It'll probably well. That, that's kind of weird because didn't they just introduce? And by just, I mean last year Brillo and the other thing. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. It's almost like they don't care about the products they made last year Hmm. or the year before that. Suspicious. Hmm. So I'm pretty excited about Google Home because as soon as I saw the Amazon Echo, I you know I could see immediately how that would be useful, except for the fact that it didn't tie into any of the systems that I have in my house. Right. Yeah, and I totally agree with that. Now on the flip side of that, I am not at all enthusiastic about this product. Because nobody knows how much it costs, and it probably will cost at least as much as the Echo, if not more. How much does the Echo cost? I think it's one ninety nine. Ooh, that's kind of steep. I mean, um, let's let's actually verify that. I did see somebody. Eki. Okay. What Eki? I did see somebody talking about one seventy nine ninety nine. Okay, so the, yeah, well, that's basically the same. Oh, is that right? Well, I, I don't know if I would buy it for that price. Now, I might handle it for maybe one hundred dollars 150 no yeah just just a hundred dollars i think the reason that i would get it is because a lot of my housemates aren't used to using that kind of thing you know so they they don't you want to expose them yeah i want to expose them to the google casts right a lot of like about half my household at this point is on ios and you know, Savannah, for example, refuses to use Google Music on her phone. I don't know why. Um, I refuse. Yeah, I know you, but you also don't listen to music. Problem solved. Uh, so, so you know, I want I want to get people used to using the kitchen speakers the way that they're already set up instead of unplugging it from the Chromecast and plugging in a physical. Th- you know. What okay, I'm, now they're doing it wrong. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Um, so if they can just like yell at this thing to start playing some music, I hope that they'll be more likely to. You know, so when I when I was watching this and I was sitting in our big training room eating um, orange chicken, I, I'm sitting there and I think Good to narrative. myself, why do people care about music so much that Google believes that they really do care that much and they build in this huge expensive speaker stuff for something that could have been a lot cheaper and a lot more accessible to normal people? If it didn't, if yeah, if it didn't have the speaker, yeah, and it would have been cheaper. Something. I mean, it would have a speaker, but it wouldn't have, you know, all this um, music-oriented, you know, appeal to it. I don't need another speaker. I have plenty of those. All I want is something to talk to. Yeah. It's it's funny because I think about my household and my parents' household, which are the two households that I'm most familiar with, and they couldn't be on more opposite ends of the spectrum in terms of, like technology that's right. integrated into their home mm-hmm. like i'm not even sure if uh google home would be very useful in my parents house because their internet is so slow yeah that is a good point you know normal normal people have you know slowish internet mm-hmm. yeah they it also, shouldn't it shouldn't be too hard to search some keywords though i uh, you well but it's all it, i think it has to send the audio up you know to um, do the voice recognition well the audio though is only phenom so it shouldn't be too bad who's phenom Phenom, it's the uh, it's the 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 sounds that make up components of word sounds. Whoa, you can extract that from audio yeah. easily. Oh, cool. Apparently, Google cool. can. Cool. Google. Okay. Well, okay. So that was fun. Um, I wouldn't buy either. Uh, we'll see. You know, if if they surprise us and it comes out at 125, I'll buy it. Okay. Yeah. But if it comes out at 200, nope. So the next one is uh, quite the mixed bag. Well, it's a mixed bag for me. I know how you feel about it. <laughs> oh, it's, it's it's not even a bag at this point. It's just <laughs> everything is just spilled out of the floor. Yeah, it's over. So they announced two new messaging apps. Uh, the first one's called 
Hello. 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 I'm yeah. not sure how. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know how it's pronounced exactly. A L L O. Uh, so this is a text chat app that I guess its big feature is that it has Google Assistant built in. So, so Slackbot. Kind of. Kind. kind yeah. Of, maybe it, a little bit more useful than that. Hopefully. Although yeah. I would have preferred Google Assistant as an API just inside of Slack. That would have actually been legitimately useful. That would have been really cool. Like yeah. Slackbot solve my time leaf problems but no you keep coming back to those time leaves mm-hmm. so yeah so the, what it means to have google assistant built into a messaging app is that it uh is going to present contextual buttons to perform actions so if uh google assistant detects that you're having a conversation about dinner plans um it will you know kind of pop up with some suggestions for places that you could go eat or if you've already chosen a place to eat it'll say like hey do you want to like get some reservations there if you're fancy enough to be going somewhere that has reservations um you know and so so google becomes an entity in your message in your message stream right you know uh so that's cool and i love the idea of having these buttons that appear however you know, I, I, I was thinking about, isn't it interesting that they're framing Google Assistant as this AI sort of kind of thing, and the buttons appear there on behalf of it? Well, it's not really any different than you just search some keywords, and it just happens to know the keywords. But they're framing it as a intelligent agent that's sure. doing well, these things. Yeah, because bots are very popular right now. Yeah, I know. But for me, I know it's not intelligent at all, and it's a turnoff. <laughs> You come from a very unique perspective. Yes. <laughs> Is it a burden sometimes, Ron? Yes. <laughs> uh, but- As I stare onto this poster <laughs> full of meaninglessness. <laughs> oh, man. Um, I mean, I think it's, I, it's, I can see how it's useful, right? Because instead of switching apps to go and do those searches and then come back to report back to the person right. who you were chatting with. I totally like, agree. Yeah. Um, I don't need it to be an intelligent thing. I just need it to do the work that it's doing. Right. Which it appears to do. Right. So that's good. So, I mean, you know, when I'm t- chatting with you and we're, we're scheduling, uh, you know, this kind of a show thing, you know, if it pulls up like hey you want to add this to the calendar that's cool to me yeah, i like that right or if if it um you know you mention somebody else you could ask hey do you want to add this person to the conversation mm-hmm. that's cool i like those things that's helpful but i i will i personally never will like oh i'm hungry and i never will want something to suggest food places to me i just i do not <laughs> care but ryan those food place suggestions are shaped by google maps reviewers like me yeah, but it's basically just a big ad, and I just don't care. I guess so. Um, it also has uh, smart replies, just like Inbox. Which is really cool. Yeah. Big fan. Um, and I guess they're they're kind of marketing that as a, a a facet of Google Assistant, but I mean, like, that's a thing that's already existed. Again, it, it's, it's this weird tie-in to this, uh, you know, intelligent agency that has really no agency at all. Mm-hmm. Um, the part that really Im- impressed me was that... Uh, this includes when somebody sends you a photo. It'll recognize like what's in the photo. Kind of cool. And uh, and then you know, cute dog. Cute dog. It, it it even like I thought it was so funny that one of their examples was that's a really cute German Shepherd Mountain Dog thing. Like it was getting so specific down to the breed of the dog, and I was like, that is not a message that I would ever send anybody. Very cute. Uh, what's my dog? I don't even know. White dog. <laughs> okay, well, I off, guess... Off white dog. I'll have to use Olo to take a picture of my dog <laughs> to find out what kind of dog I have. Because I don't even know. Excellent, excellent. Um, some other features... Actually, no, let's talk about the developers thing first. Um, so developers can create Allegedly. Things. Can you... allegedly. Well, I feel like the reservations and, you know, seeing re- Yelp reviews in there, that was... That's one example of tying things in, right? Or is that just something that is based on the knowledge graph? Uh, to be honest, I got the impression that nothing was ready. Yet. Okay. <laughs> um, the th- the thing that uh, she definitely mentioned was games. Um, we saw the the user playing a game with Google, where Google would say a, a movie title but only in emojis, and you had to guess what the movie title was. And supposedly, other people can make games for. Again, Allo. allegedly. Yeah. Now, now, un- not allegedly, that's all going to be irrelevant because nobody will play those games. 
Right. Well, it's yeah. it's like how you called Siri just an amusement. Exactly. This is again just an amusement. It, it's something to get people to pay attention to Google's assistant, which isn't really an assistant. It's not really anything. It's just a keyword searcher. Yeah. Right. I, I like the way you're putting that. That makes a lot of sense to me. Uh, another feature that they were talking about is that you can make your messages uh, larger or smaller by kind of dragging up and down on this slider. Eh. I kind of liked it. It's unique. It's it makes a lot of sense in the in a messaging context. Okay. Why not have bold support and italic support, and you know support for actual like you know maybe fonts or hmm, what's that thing again called pictures and emoji? Hmm. Oh wait. well, they definitely have. They have that. They pictures just couldn't and emoji. handle any enhancement to text. Plain text. <laughs> Did they say for sure that they don't have bold and italics and stuff? They don't have it or in just... Hangouts. Oh, they do on the desktop. Where's that sad violin? <laughs> okay. <laughs> like, if I'm typing to you on a desktop, I can do bold and italics and underline Which is, I think, a fluke because somebody forgot to take that out. There's <laughs> no way that's supposed to be there. <laughs> that is funny. <laughs> I remember the first one of the first times that I was trying out Hangouts, and I kind of made the assumption that it was going to be the same Markdown as yeah, or Markdown. Markup or whatever Mark, Markdown. Uh, Mark, the same format Mark, that you use Mark something in Google Plus, right? But it's not Mark Plus plus Sh- Mark plus. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna get so many uh, confused responses from the guy named Mark, who you know his that's his name on Google uh, Plus is Mark. Perfect. He's plus Mark. Okay. Um, that poor guy. <laughs> They also have an incognito mode, which uses that's... the exact same icon as incognito in Chrome. So when they showed that off, I, I said, hmm, okay, well, they got one thing right. Yeah. And I like, it seems to be completely like it, it, it starts a separate chat Yeah, separate thread, activity. Um, th- than the one that you currently possibly mm-hmm. have with that person. Right. Which is way, way better than the version in Hangouts where you can like turn off chat history for the current chat you know brief, and then yeah. and then when you want to continue archiving those things then you turn history back on yeah um which isn't you know it's like wh- wait is, am i archived right now am i not i don't remember yada yada so i mean you know it's, it's, again they did not show any kind of search in allo allo whatever yeah. it is and so isn't it funny yet again the chat app has no searching functionality yeah um, well, I mean, Hangouts doesn't have search functionality directly in it. Which is, again, ridiculous. It is. Uh, you have to I, go through an email platform to get yeah. to your chat platform? Hmm. And I feel like I only know that you can do that because I've been around so long and that they, I've and, been and, using and, Google Talk from within yeah. Gmail for right. the, my entire life. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now, there was somebody at work who was still using the non-Hangout branded chat. How? Apparently, they, their account just hadn't switched over yet somehow. Wow. That's crazy. <laughs> I know. It really was. I love going and chatting with like Google support because they're, it's still the same interface. It's the Google Talk interface. That's beautiful. It's crazy. Mm-hmm. And I was, I was like sending emojis and stuff that blinked and moved. And, and I was like, this is delightful. You get to do this all day. And the other person was like, yeah. <laughs> it's pretty cool. So let's see. Any, any other? Oh, end-to-end encryption. That's pretty cool. Yep. Um, that's good you know it's part of the security package mm-hmm. it's nice that they have that however it doesn't matter because nobody's going to use lo allo hello yeah let's talk about that so i really am really disappointed in google for making more messaging platforms because that is absolutely what we don't need in this world is more messaging apps it just fragments all of our conversations i can't remember whether i was talking to you last on slack or hangouts or well we never talk on snapchat but you know you know what I mean? Yes. Right. So, yeah, and it's like these, the things that they're adding here in Allo and Duo, which we'll talk about next, mm-hmm. uh, could totally have just been features that they built into Hangouts. Why the heck did they not do that? You know, you know what they could have done also is they could have just built the Allo features on top of Hangouts as a separate app, just like they did, but it would still send messages through Hangouts. So, like, if you didn't have the app on the other side... A, the other person would still receive them? They would still receive the message. They just wouldn't necessarily receive the mm. included garbage results of your Italian restaurants. So, I mean, I, I don't think... And it's not. It's certainly not impossible for Hangouts to include extra information. Mm-hmm. You know, you can send a person a live map of wherever your location is. That's true. Although I think that that's just a link to Google Maps. It is, but it's a, it's a living map. It's not just an image. How is it a living map? 
It's, you can't drag it around within Hangouts. You have to leave no, that and go to Google than it, Maps. It, it's not just an image. It's a real thing. Okay, I believe you. It's differenter than it used to be. Okay. Yeah. They could have they could have done this, but they didn't. Yeah, no. They chose to suffer and make everyone else. You know what else they chose not to do? Never say the word Hangout in the in the keynote. Like, even just the lowercase h, Hangout. Yeah. Like the word meaning to hang out with somebody, not the app name. They they never use that word. There were sentences where it would it like felt natural for them to say hang out and they didn't. They said a different word. I was like I was going out of my mind. Waiting for it, like, hoping just, for it. Yeah, like what the hell are they doing? Are they trying to kill hangouts? Yes. Okay, apparently. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. But it's so crazy because they pushed that in Google Fi. But, but which they also didn't talk about in the keynote. But, but hmm. well, they might talk about that when they release the phones. Okay, because yeah. it's it's pretty much just a phone thing. Right, but they were talking about Android for like forty five minutes. That's a phone thing. Yeah, but that's a phone thing you can have right now. Yeah, like you can't have Morphi. Morphi, because <laughs> there are no more phones yet. Okay, yeah, yeah. Okay, so uh, yeah, and, um, if you wanted a unified messaging platform, you don't get it here. Go go Apparently go not. check out WWDC two thousand ten. For iMessage support. Is that a unified? Well, I guess it is. It's if you happen to be on unified. an Apple device. It is device. more unified than any other chatting platform. Okay. It has seamless integration between iMessage people and you know regular phone and SMS. That's like 90% of what I want. Except that most of the time that I hear people talking about iMessage, it's they got really confused one time when they switched back and forth between carriers or something or between phones, and iMessage was turned into on in one mode but not the other, and so then they couldn't receive SMS or something like that. Yes, and like, and yeah. I'm sure if Hangouts didn't suck enough to even get that far... <laughs> They would be complaining about that in Hangouts. <laughs> At least we don't even we don't even have problems with Hangouts because we can't even use it. <laughs> yeah, which is funny because I use it on a daily basis and I love it. I hate it. It's useless. <laughs> Your mom messages you in Hangouts all the time. Yeah, I know that. Just because it's true doesn't mean I can't play this character. <laughs> okay. <laughs> let's talk about Duo. Let's do that. So yeah, let's Duo that. <laughs> uh, so it's a, quote, simple one-to-one calling app for everyone. Hmm. Is that true? That's literally the line that they used in the in the keynote. Um, it seems like so. I don't get it. I really don't get it. Like we're abandoning being able to call multiple people in in a video call. So I guess this is this is just one to one now. Um, and the only feature that they've added is knock knock. <laughs> yes. <laughs> which who is it? Which just means that when you call somebody in Duo. They will see a live video stream of you before they decide whether they want to hang up or hang up, <laughs> whether they want to uh, answer the call or not. Which, I mean, they're 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 displaying it as like, oh my gosh, this person's like displaying a, a wedding ring beforehand. Like, ah, oh, I got engaged. You should talk to me because I have a special announcement. That situation is never ever going to happen. It's just going to be you awkwardly looking at a freaking camera, looking you know half asleep because you're probably laying in bed like what you know yeah and it it it, it you know it sounds good on paper mm-hmm. to to have a video preview before the for, before you pick up the call i get it but when you normally call someone it's not like the, like it's not like you can pre-answer like when you call a person on a regular phone line mm-hmm. it's not like you listen to the outside of the phone before you pick it up right you know what i mean yeah yeah so there's no societal reason for this thing to exist. Yeah, the the reason that they give is that it's like it's always so awkward when somebody calls you and then you have to decide whether or not you're going to pick up based on no information. And it's That's like, why I don't accept calls. It's like okay, for one thing, yeah, I don't call people. I message them first in, via text to say, "Hey, are you available for a call right now?" That could have been a contextual thing in Allo. Hey, can I call you? And they could say yes or no. Yeah. Right. And then if they said yes, it the automatically other thing starts could the just, yeah look, done. Whoa. Google pay us. <laughs> uh, Run it out of pens here. Uh, uh, you know what's really funny about this feature though, is that Snapchat introduced this like three months ago. I heard that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and um, you know they probably um, they probably copied that right out from under them. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. for sure. Um, my one consolation here is that uh, Duo will probably actually work on Android, whereas Snapchat does not. Allegedly, this is going to be cross-platform for both Allo and Duo. 
Mm-hmm. But by cross platform, you mean Android and iOS. Yeah. They have made no mention of the web or desktops or anything else. And if I can't use a messaging platform on all of my devices, I'm not going to use it at all. Yep. And 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 you know, certainly, even if they did get it onto you know onto the web. It certainly wouldn't be, you know, native to whatever platform you're actually using on your computer. So no, and I'm fine with that. I'm not. All right. So uh, wait, are you one of those people that's mad because Hangouts isn't? Yes. Wow. Very, right. ma- very mad. It, talk at it. Why not? Just give it to me. Just give me an API. I'll build my own app. Oh my god, it did. <laughs> I forgot. I forgot that Google Talk had an actual desktop program. Two apps, in fact. There was a regular one, and there was a better beta version that nobody should use, but it was better. Huh. Uh-huh. Huh. I... Turns out. And because it was an open API platform, you could even use third-party clients with it. So I used Pigeon quite a Oh, often. that's great. Yeah, that's great. There's no reason for Google to do this, except that they want everyone to suffer. I think it's about control. It's definitely about control. Yes, you know? controlling the suffering. Yes, all right. Though they would tell us that, oh, we wouldn't be able to use these cool features like uh, resizing the text. Yes, you could. If you, if you were on a third-party client. The client would be up to implement it would it yeah if the client wanted to get popular and you know be be used frequently the client would just implement it oh, okay the pro the protocol has to be the same everywhere mm-hmm. as as it as it would be but the client just like twitter clients do they have to go and implement those features and it's up to the protocol the api oh, to provide the feature well yeah so i was thinking of pigeon as it exists already you no. know as as all of the third-party messaging clients exist already they they implement very minimal like, stuff because like, none of the messaging platforms right. had anything other than text right so but if you if you could imagine hangouts as an api in a week mm-hmm. the hangouts app would be replaced by talon for twitter i mean talon for hangouts <laughs> or what do we use phoenix for hangouts it would have to be well let's see if if all of the twitter ones are bird themed what would the hangouts ones green blobs be? splat <laughs> and splot uh yeah. On. So yeah, we don't we don't like this idea. No, no. Android N, a good thing. Yes. This guy da- named Dave. He's great. He has very good stage presence. I like him. <sighs> Hi, I'm Dave. Funny thing is, though, I don't think that they mentioned very much on stage that we didn't already know from the preview. No, and I think that's fine. They knew that going in, and actually, this probably saved a lot of them mm-hmm. from from you know actually having to do something. Sure. Like yeah. Like, they would have actually had to announce something useful here if they didn't have this 25-minute segment of repeated info. Mm-hmm. Though, I mean, it, it kind of makes me wonder, like, what's the point of the segment of, of watching the keynote if I already know stuff that's in it? You know? I, I think, uh, as the trend has become, keynotes are irrelevant now, and the developer conference is for developers to go and develop. That's true. That's true. They did have some fancy, like, gigantic harps at the beginning. That was cool. Yes. Uh, I guess one thing that was new is uh, they they came out and made it seem like they were going to announce what the name was going to be for Android N. I know they did. See, it did seem that way. And then they were like, oh, but we don't know either. Yeah. Oh, we vote for us, please. You all need to help us out. Now there is something really funny uh, in, in on this uh, page. On this page, yeah. There's a video link that you can click on, and this is the funniest video that I've watched in quite a while. Of like this hypothetical naming company that they have hired to come up with the next uh, the name of the next version of Android, uh, and they're really really bad at their jobs. You know, my office does not look like that. No, you also don't work at a naming company. Mm, well, that that helps. I just noticed that they really don't have furniture in that built in that room where he's being interviewed. It's fine. It's funny. Yeah. Well. Yeah. So what what do you have for um, names? What are you going for? Uh, what did I? I I submitted Nutrigrain. <laughs> okay. Because that was the only end thing that I could think of that was a food that hasn't been like used. Yeah. That hasn't been thrown around. I mean, everybody's like going for Nutella or nougat. Yeah. Or I mean, that... it'd, be, it'd be really cool if they got Nutella, but I feel like that's kind of um kind of expensive. Is that a brand name or is that like a category though? I'm pretty sure it's a brand. Okay. Um. Yeah. So let's see. They talked about um. Vulcan. Was that new? Um. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, you know, it's newish. It's just more graphic stuff. Yeah. Uh. They talked about some Android runtime. Now this is really cool. I'm a compiler freak. Hold yeah. on. So, uh, compilers. Now, uh, the old way, which was Dalvik, was just in time. So when you opened an app, every single time it would recompile. Why did they abandon that? 
Well, here's the problem with that. It's slow. It causes stuttering um, because Java, as a language, has to warm up. Mm -hmm. And what that means is sometimes when you click a button or when you do something for the first time you haven't done recently, the cache isn't hot. The code paths aren't primed. And so they're stuttering, there's lag, and there's just general system unresponsiveness. I want you to know that a lot of what you're saying right now sounds like Hollywood tech mumbo jumbo but it's real realistically i I know that it's real realistically what i just said was as far as i can get to hollywood mumbo jumbo (laughs) so no these look like computers totally not (laughs) love that show so um that was delvic and that that was good enough at the time now however we have art and art is kind of the other way so instead of doing it just in time we do it ahead of time and ahead of time is better because we can process all the things up front. They're ready to go, optimized for the phone. But here's the problem with that. Every time you do a system update, 125 apps later, it takes 10 minutes. Yeah, that's and the worst part of the process. when you install an app, it also takes uh, a chunk of time up front. So if you have a slower device, you know, like a 400, 600, or mm. 808, for example, it takes literally forever. Hey, don't throw shade at me. Watch out while I do that. <laughs> so... The compromise is to split the two. So you can have just in time when you download an app, it'll just in time compile the things that you need so that you can at least use it. Mm -hmm. Then, in theory, later on, after you've used it for a little bit and you go do something else, it can compile the rest of it. What a great solution. That is a good solution. Mm -hmm. Now, we knew about this feature coming in N for quite some time since the first preview, and uh, it's been praised by the iPad. (laughs) I knew you were going to make that reference. I'm so happy. Uh, Let's see. They talked about some security stuff, file-based encryption instead of block-based encryption. Eh. Uh, Seamless updates. Oh, this was cool. I liked this one uh, because they talked about how from now on the phone is going to have two separate system images um, and it will update the one that isn't being used to run the phone when, when you download a system update. So that um, it can quickly switch to that image when you restart the phone next time. Uh, And and then it'll just update the, you know, the old one that you were using, yada, yada, flip flop. Um, Apparently, this is the way that Chromebooks have done updates Mm -hmm. for like as long as time can tell, which is great because I can tell you that the Chromebook update process is the fastest that I have ever experienced. Yep. And this makes um, too much sense. However... This does leave some problems for an OEM, such as stop making your phones with 8 gigabytes of space. So if there's two images now, and an average image is about 500 megs, or a little bit more maybe, depending on how unlucky you get, Mm. that's like a gig, at least, a gig and a half. And that's assuming it's compressed, and I don't think an operating system usually is compressed, so maybe like more than a gig or two. Mm. So two gigs at least of space that's mandatory. So yeah, I don't know about that. This is basically... Going to cause problems for OEMs, and they yeah, will for they lower will, end phones. They yeah. will either cause people to suffer by still going with eight, and in which case their phones just won't work ever again. Do you remember the um, iOS issue on an update fairly late last year, where many phones didn't have enough space to go to the next version of the operating system? Yeah, and the solution for that that Apple has is that you download it to iTunes on a computer, plug it in, and then it updates the phone. Um, when was the last time you found iTunes for Android? No? No, there's nothing that can do that. So unless you actually have enough space to download and install an update... Oh, wait, Android solved this issue by never giving updates to phones. Okay, problem solved. Do you, uh, <laughs> I just came up with a crazy solution. Make everybody install the Android development kit on their computers. I wouldn't I wouldn't be opposed, but no, I don't think that's going to work. Nah. Uh, let's see. Da, 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 da. They talked about um, uninstalling apps that are misbehaving automatically. Nah, I don't that even sounds know that, crazy. I don't even know what that means. What does that even mean? So if it keeps force quitting, it just, you no, know, you can't have this anymore? I don't know. Stop sending us air logs. We're just going to un- uninstall it. <sighs> Uh, yeah, I don't, it's not going to like detect f- apps that are not following like Google's rules in the play store. And, no, cause like, it would already be detected. Yeah. In the play right. Store. Well, I you know, know, I guess, I mean, if I, I guess if an app exhibits, um, you know, malicious behavior after it's been in the store for a while, mm-hmm. it could just get uninstalled. Mm-hmm. But I feel like that's kind of evil. Do you think that would happen to ES? It should. Hopefully. 
Uh, multitasking. This was a big one. Uh, we knew about the split screen multitasking already because that's been in the in the preview. Kind of uh, half working, right? Sorta for some apps, maybe. Um, what? But, but I think that the new thing that they talked about was uh, picture-in-picture mode for Android TV. I I hadn't heard about that before. Hold on. I have to think about where I lost my Android TV. Oh, right. Right over there. Yes. It's in the corner being shunned because nobody cares. Mine's still plugged into my TV. Um, and I, I was thinking about this while I was at work. I was like, oh, I should remote into home so that I can update that to the... And, wait. Hmm. Wait, no, that's not how remoting works. No. Not, not not as much as you would hope. Yeah, uh, so I don't know. I didn't. I didn't actually get to see this part of the keynote. So tell me more. So picture in picture mode. Did they actually show it? Yes, yes, they did. So they had a YouTube uh, video playing, and then on a TV. Yeah, and uh, I it, was it like a trailer for a game or something? Okay. And then they decided that they wanted to go and install that game on uh, on the Android TV. So they. Um, had, let the player the trailer keep going in a picture in picture thingy, and then went to the Play Store to install that. I've lived a long time, and I've never says the twenty three year old. And I've never wanted to install a game on my TV. I tried out a few; they didn't work so well. Not on the Nexus huh, player. Imagine that. So I mean, okay, so the multi window stuff is great and all, and uh, it would actually be a lot more useful to test or actually use on a real tablet. Imagine that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Hmm. There's only one Android tablet that actually is good right now, so... Or, or that uh, it hmm. is supported in the... Huh. Oh, wait, no, there's two that are supported in, in the beta. Ooh. The 9 and the Pixel C. Oh, is the 9 a product? Yeah, I thought apparently. they discontinued that. Well, it's still it's still supported in the... Yeah, uh, I don't thingy. count products that aren't sold anymore. Okay, sure. I mean, if I can't buy it right now to test with it, it doesn't count anymore. Like, Well, the few, assumption is that you already have it. A few years ago... At the day after the keynote, I put in an order for the Nexus 7 2013 and you're late, but whatever. Sure. Yeah. So, I mean, if it doesn't exist, oh, I can't right. buy it. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's what you're saying. Right. Right. Okay. So, notifications. I think we already know those, knew those things. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Emoji. Uh, yeah, we already knew about all that. Mm, skin tones. Mm-hmm. Um, so most of the stuff we already knew. Android is the best Android ever. Blah blah blah. Oh I, no, no, no! We got to revisit that okay, quote. I love that you quote. Do. Android N is the best version of Android yet. I have to say that, but it's actually true. Dave is the best. Dave is the best, and it is actually true. This is the best Android version. I mean, just some of the things that come out with it, like uh, the new notification panel and the new quick settings panel. That alone is good enough for me. Mm-hmm. I mean, I know I wanted multitasking, but I'm not going to really use it on my phone. It's just nice to have. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So at some point when my Shield tablet has that, I'll probably use it because um, yeah. that's actually a big enough to you know make it useful. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 So here's some uh, non-Android things such as Daydream. Oh, wait. Well, that's but if Android. You, if you're mistaken, you might think that is Android because, you know, there's a feature called Daydream. <laughs> but you'd be wrong. This is a different Daydream. Yeah, no. So this is referring to high-quality immersive mobile VR. Also known as vaporware. <laughs> um, or uh, Samsung Gear VR. Vaporware. Anyway, um, so this is kind of like their next level cardboard. Um, it's It's a... A spec for phones, and a spec for a headset, and a spec for a remote. So it's vaporware. So like anybody, I guess, can make these things as long as they follow the directions. Follow those rules. Yep. Um, there's going to be a VR mode in Android N, um, so that things such as like notifications don't pop down and look terrible and you know blind you when you're in VR. Uh, so that's good. Um, the the reference design for the headset and controller um the headset i mean headsets are head, headsets the controller i was kind of disappointed with it looked exactly like the like the, an- the the remote yeah for the yeah. android tv it was white yeah, yeah. uh and i think it's stubbier. and it was kind of dimpled in the area where the you know the um d pad usually is right yeah i just i i i can't ma- imagine myself caring at all about this yeah i where's the hardware um, they developed the spec, yet. but where's the hardware? <laughs> they didn't even show de- development hardware. Where's the hardware? I don't. Yeah, and they haven't told us what's in the spec yet. What like what processor is re- required in a phone? How much RAM does it need to have? Obviously, like, what does it mean? An A twenty. Um. Yeah. I, I don't know. I mean, I when they first said that they that this was going to be a spec sheet, I was like, oh, you know, they probably like their latest 
uh, Nexus phones are going to be in that spec sheet already because, like, when they announced mm. Phi, mm-hmm. they were like, "Oh yeah, our ne- latest Nexus has the proper radios to work with this. No right. other phone has that." And they so they can't release the specs for this until the phones come out because that apparently. would spoil the phones unveiling. But we know what the phones are going to have. Oh, that's because a good point. The big phone is going to have the 830, and the little phone is going to have some sucky one. Mm-hmm. So there you go. Problem solved. One thing that they mentioned, um, obviously, you know, you can like, there's going to be apps that where you can play like games. And Allegedly. VR and stuff. And yeah. Um, but the thing that got me really excited that I hadn't realized I really wanted in VR until now is IMAX movies. I could watch IMAX movies without leaving my house. But you can do that with like any VR headset. So, you know, any any old $800 headset that you happen to have lying around. Um, so uh, let's say one of those things came out. How much would that cost? One of the... Are we talking just the headset yeah. for Daydream and the uh-huh. controller? Yeah. Oh, that's a good question. Because you already bought a phone for $1,000. Okay, yep. fine. I meant 650 <laughs> So it really just cost another, you know, three fifty or 250 yeah. to get you to $1,000? Um, well, I, I mean, I imagine that the technology that goes into the headset and the remote aren't that complicated, so they can probably keep that cost down by quite a bit. Yes, probably. Uh, but I don't know about that. Uh, yeah, I mean, hopefully, like, I mean, I'm hoping, well, no, 50 is too low. Because, I mean, cardboard, which is a piece of cardboard, costs like $35 to get. Yeah, but that's because somebody had to fold it. No, they sent it to you unfolded, and you have to fold it. Okay, let me re- retract. That's because somebody had to unfold it. Sure. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Flatten it out. It probably has something to do with the lenses that come in it. Probably. Anyway. anyway. Okay. Android Wear 2.0. Yeah. Uh, the only significant differences that I heard about was that the watch face can now display any information from any app, which is kind of cool. Uh, no. No? Not cool, not cool enough. Um, again, where's the hardware? I mean... <laughs> that's a not under the, the... That's not what's supposed to be talked about in this keynote, no, but, Ryan. But I understand. But the only way to really convince me of the software's importance here is to actually couple it with some hardware that wasn't garbage. The last two generations of Wear, which was Wear and Wear 1. <laughs> so if this is Wear 2. Where, where, there's been two years of Wear. Where has Wear been? Where, 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 where? Art thou? Not here, apparently. No. Mm-hmm. Um, the other, the other thing that they talked about that's new is that apps on the watch can now be standalone. Um, so in this way, they're kind yep. of catching up with uh, at, at the Apple Watch and um, Samsung's Gear watches yeah. mm-hmm. um which could store stuff on the watch and actually you know like play music and, and have like fitness apps yeah, on them something about um having apps that can do nothing but just on the watch instead right yeah yeah mm-hmm. so you can so you only have to carry around one thing that doesn't do anything for you instead of two okay google didn't work stop saying that <laughs> so android studio 2.2 i'll let you talk about this one because i don't care you know i don't really care that much either however i will say that in the last year, uh, Android Studio has matured so much. It's amazing. Now, I remember years ago when I worked on an app called Odin, I used the pre-release, like the pre-1.0 of Android Studio. Oh, and wow. It, and it was fine. That doesn't feel like it was that long ago. No, it doesn't. 2014 fall, I believe. Okay. So it really isn't that long ago, but it was, you know, a year and a half ago. It's uh, it's come a long way. It's much better now than it's ever been before. I used to always make fun of Android. Uh, you know, iOS had an operating system and an IDE ready to go for you to develop for it. Mm-hmm. And uh, now uh, now Google sort of at least has the IDE part. Coming soon to Chromebooks. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> um, yeah, I got to say uh, that I recently installed Android Studio on my computer to, you know, in order to flash some devices. Yeah. Um, and I didn't hate the experience. Yeah, but I wasn't developing on it. I was just using it to flash stuff. Did you have to install the whole thing just to flash? Shouldn't have had to. Uh, I probably thing. didn't have to, but I did yeah. for whatever reason. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's cool. Uh, Android Instant Apps. Yeah. We already knew a little. I, I don't think that we really knew, learned anything new about this. We were but... just given a video example. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You, you decide that you want to open an app that isn't installed on your computer and it, and it just loads whatever parts of the JDK it needs. Yay. Yeah. Wow. Later news. Uh, this is stuff that came out after the keynote. In the um, sessions. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That, uh, I mean, that I thought was kind of significant. Um, Android apps on Chrome OS. Woo! We knew this was coming. 
This was what? Is somebody in the well? Uh, something orange just fell into the well. It's a cat. Yes, with it's... a bunny. <laughs> <laughs> with a bunny. Did we just witness a kill? <laughs> That's so cool. My cats don't kill things. I have. I have, okay. I have a cat named Rusty, and Rusty will kill. That's so cool. It's the third bunny. It's like this an one. animal. They're all dead. <laughs> Okay, what were we talking about? Right, Android apps and Chrome OS. We knew this was coming. Uh, you know, last year there was a big kerfuffle about how the development of Chrome OS was sort of halted because they suddenly decided they wanted to merge the two, and uh, that and they, didn't happen They yet. did have, like, at one point there were, like, five Android apps that were available yeah, on like Chrome OS. Like, uh, yeah, and Duolingo was yeah. one. And uh, I tried out a couple of them, and I quickly decided that, you know what? All five of these are already have really nice websites that I want to use on my Chromebook more than I want to use the Android apps. Yeah, and, you know, Android apps were never really meant for keyboard and mouse. Or for a large screen like that. Or for a large screen. And uh, even though they support keyboard and mouse fairly well, you mm-hmm. know, for accessibility reasons, mm-hmm. it just, the design isn't there. So, sure, great, Chrome OS, Chrome OS? Chrome OS has it, but nobody cares. There, there are some... Some really important situations that I can think of that uh, I'm going to be taking advantage of, such as uh, having like music saved offline for my Google Music, um, being able to play Hearthstone for once on my <laughs> Chromebook. Um, those are just two things that I that I can think of off the top. of I my was head. also thinking about like a native Twitter client. Oh yes, it might look funny, but mm. it's at least an idea. Yeah, because I guess um, the Twitter website never really implemented the notifications on Chrome, did they? I don't know. Okay. Uh, The other thing that I wrote down is that uh, Android Auto, the interface, will now be available on phones. uh, So you don't need to have a car with Android Auto built in. Um, You know, you can just put the phone into auto mode and it'll, like, adopt the interface that's nice and big and voice-based so that... With Android Assistant. I mean, Google Assistant. Yeah, sure. Um, And when I read this, I was like, this is so obvious. Why didn't... Why hasn't this been the case since Android Auto first came out? Duh. Because Google, there, I answered the question. Sure. You know, I, I love the idea, but again, you asked the good questions. Where was this all along? This is this is the kind of thing that I would totally put an NFC chip into my car for. Like, I tap the NFC chip with my phone, go into auto mode, so that I don't have to hunt around and find Android Auto on my phone. Well, I might be able to find you some chips then. Oh, hey. Yeah. Well. Or also, I have a life case. Hey, that's useless. Well, I mean, it serves as one NFC chip. But then it wouldn't always be in the car either. I also don't always have the same car because I don't own a car. Well, so you're going to need multiple chips. <laughs> sure. Can I put one of those in every single car to go? Yes. Will they notice? No. <laughs> Who knows? As long as you put it in a weird place every time. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, overall impressions... Yeah, kind of lukewarm this year. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I would have to re-listen to my last year's impressions, which were probably identical to this year's. Where's Hangout? And, um... Let's see, I think last year, what was the most exciting thing that they came out with? Probably Google Photos. Yeah. Yeah. Um, This year, I mean, part of the reason that Google I.O. kind of suffers is that they, they can't release, like, exciting hardware things. They could. For the most part. I mean, Google Home is here, um... But it is kind of just they're like, we're going to make a thing that somebody else already made. They could release hardware products. They choose not to because for a few years there, they were beholden to the audience. Give us stuff now or we won't come. <laughs> Everybody gets a Chromebook Pixel. Yeah. Under their seat. Mm-hmm. Not not the case anymore. No. You might get a like a cardboard box. What if, what if everybody could take home one of those giant harps? That'd actually be okay. And and the you know the harpists go along with it. You know, you know. So actually, let's talk about the conference in general. So this year it was outside. Did you notice that? Yeah, yeah. That's, for the keynote, yeah. That was uh, kind of interesting, kind of a, a unique thing to do. I enjoyed watching it from home because it looked nice and sunny and warm. And you know, we're in Minnesota, where it's, it's still forty degrees it was when I get up. There. Yeah, I get up and bike to to school in the morning, and it's like forty degrees. Yay. Yeah, it was uh, a little bit warm there, probably for you know a, a boatload of people. Standing around, suffering. Well, yeah, I've heard that uh, after that initial keynote, when people are trying to go to their sessions, and, you know, the lines are like 90 minutes long, and so you have to get into line for a thing before the last, the, you know, the other session that you want to go to even starts. Not a good sign. Um, 
and you're standing out there in 93 degree weather, a lot of people have been very unhappy. Mm -hmm. But we don't have to worry about that because we're not there. (laughs) Problem solved. Yep, lukewarm. Or very, Um, very, very hot. No, just lukewarm. Well, the weather. I mean, after that keynote, nobody was impressed anymore. No. Yeah. Maybe next year. They should just have Dave do everything. Really, I think he should just, you know, sort of do that. You know, like, I don't mean just pretend everything. I mean, just get Sundar out of there and just Dave. Well, Sundar wasn't bad, but I, I mean, he was there for two minutes, so that was fine. Yeah, but I like Dave. We have to see him. Dave. Okay. So, Ryan. Hi. Where can people find you on the internet? Well, you can find me just about everywhere, but especially on the Twitter at Ryan Mar, and of course, on my website, contextual.link. <laughs> Does that, what, what's the shows on there right now? Anything? Hang on. Tag. Are you serious? Oh, I missed some letters. Contextual. That's funny. <laughs> oh, I missed more letters than I thought. Oh Hang my on. gosh, how hard it is it to type? Oh in my the... gosh, it just searched for the letter N. <laughs> Stop that, Chrome. There we go. Contextual.link. What am I doing wrong? What are you typing? So I'm Ian R. Buck, and you can find me pretty much everywhere as Ian R. Buck, especially... Should I mention a website that we haven't made yet, but hopefully you're about to make? Yes! Yes, ianrbuck.com. It'll exist sometime <laughs> in the Soon. next three hours. Yes. Yes. Very good. That's it. I, I've said it, so it definitely has to exist before I leave this house. Or I can just bleep it or edit it. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. But yeah, that, that should have links to like all the, all the places that I exist. Perfect. So that'll be good. Okay. Well, have a good one. Thanks for coming in. Yeah, thanks for having a house, Ryan. I will. <laughs> <laughs>